In this video, I do some scraping and some sanding and some more freaking sanding. Hey peeps, Phil here from Rising Sun Guitar Mods. I know, it's been a minute, but hey, let's chase this. Come on, if you're into the old school Ibanez guitars like I am, the Blazer series, the Roadstar series, stick around because I get to put together another one. Cool thing about this guitar is it was sent in by one of you guys. This one's pretty cool. It's been in pieces for the last 20 years. It's like, just not right. So stick around, because at the end, you'll get to see the owner's reaction, which is pretty cool. Ah, the 1980s. Ghetto bastards, break dance, party mania. Time when here was big. Cars were wicked cool. And rock music was loud. Really fucking loud. And the girls. Oh, the girls. Oh, there was also that guy. Yeah, I agree. Someone else can talk about the weird shit. And while all that shit was going on, Ibanez were trying to get around lawsuits from Fender and Gibson. And during this they produced the Blazer series, which then went on to become the Roadster series. And the Roadster is by far my favourite series of Ibanez. And the Blazer is pretty close. Time to meet Frankie. That's Frankie. And that's this Ibanez Blazer. Brand spanking new. Well, Frankie saw me do this. You see, Frankie's dad bought him this Ibanez Blazer. He played the absolute bejesus out of it. Then about 20 years ago, he pulled it apart with the uh, good intentions of giving it a good clean up and put back together. But she stayed in this case for 20 years. It broke my heart to see this, so I agreed. And it's a pretty cool story. This brings back a lot of memories for Frankie, so I'm more than happy to give it a crack. Here it is, dry fit. Put all the bits together to see what we're working with. A few bits that aren't original, the tone and volume pots are off a of fender. The machine heads, these are off a music man. They're gonna have to go. We'll go hunting for some originals, see what we can find. The neck, yeah, it's seen better days, but it's all in all pretty good. The body is pretty dinged up. The normal hairline crack along that heel is always there. Biggest issue on this guitar is those frets, man. I've talked to Frankie about this and he's okay with me to give it a fret dress. He doesn't want to go to the expense of replacing all of the frets. I'll see what I can do with them. I have warned him though that there'll be no more fret dressing this guitar after this one. And this bridge is going to have to come off and uh, I ain't touching it so it's going in the ultrasonic. I'll give it a polish after all that god knows what. Bits of hair and yum yums. <laughs> Let's get rid of that shit then we'll get into it. One of the good things about this ultrasonic machine is it uh, makes a wicked cup of tea. Mm, 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 mm. Look at that soupy goodness. Also peeps, if you like what you're seeing, like, comment, subscribe. It's not gonna cost you too much. Actually, it's gonna cost you nothing, but it will help this channel get going. Let's go. Just cleaning up the pick guard, getting ready for a bit of shielding. I got another video on my channel for shielding. I'll look it up there in the right hand corner. I go into a bit of depth about what shielding does and how it works as an antenna to uh, send those nasty, noisy frequencies to ground. Go check it out, guys, if you've got a noisy guitar, worth a look. And here's the original spaghetti wiring, which I'll be replacing. Cleaning up all those pickup covers. A fair bit of grime on those. That's age, man. Age and play. But, you know, it's what it is. I got a nice Japanese-made replacement five-way switch. Uh, the old one was no good. That one can go in. Oh 
I've got a video coming on clean wiring and uh, the benefits of having a good wiring job and what I use and how I go about doing it. That's coming soon guys. My rubber coloured spaghetti. I like to keep everything neat if I can. Anything that's got a chance of shorting, I like to use the rubber tubing. I also uh, like to use orange cap capacitors. I always thought that these had to have a polarity. Uh, the leg that goes to the outer foil, if you put that on the positive, it generally will make more noise when you touch it. I think there's an experiment coming because I've been questioning on that. So yeah, keep your eyes out. I generally like to use the pushback fabric wiring with a single core. The reason for that is it's easy to bend into shape and get it to go where you like. And it looks shit hot. Nice new bone nut. We all know the importance of a good nut. Scraping that fingerboard, I can't take it down too far because Frankie wants to keep those finger marks in the board, so I can only take a small amount off. Now there are some uh, pretty deep scratches in the fingerboard, but I'll do the best job I can. Oh, because we love sanding, how about some slow-mo sanding? No, nah, sanding, you just can't make it look fun at all. Oh God. That bridge finally came out of the ultrasonic and it polished up like a million bucks. It looks like some super bling now. Pretty happy with how that come up. And nothing like a nice strong glass of water for a late night scraping. That's just getting rid of all that build up of polyurethane when these were sprayed with the frets on. Anyway, grab that strong glass of water and uh, sit back and enjoy. actually was able to find a set of gold tuning machines. Um, they're not the originals of the Blazer, they're off a Roadstar. Uh, the, the screws line up a little bit different, but we just could not find a set of Blazer tuners. They're pretty much the same. They're made by Gotto, um, but they've got the Ibanez branding on them with the Smooth Tune logo on them. Um, the difference between the Blazer and the Roadstar is just the location of the screw. That's it. I dropped some super glue onto that crack. It's under the scratch plate, but I just didn't want it to go any further. So I just put a bit of glue on it, scraped it flat. You see I've done the relicking on this, so there was some pretty significant dents and chips in it. Uh, Frankie wanted me to do something similar to what I've done to my guitar, so gave it a bit of relicking, put a bit of oil into those bits of timber to keep it good. It's me just uh, wet sanding and polishing. I swear to God, customizing guitars, and if you're a guitar builder you know this, it's all just sanding and polishing, mate. Here we go. The good old fret jobs. Again, sanding and polishing. I did finally get a new fret file. This thing was worth every single cent. Fret jobs are way quicker now. That's the Frick Guru. 
does uh, medium to large and large to XL. And you've seen me do the fret jobs. Just got to go through all the papers right up to that there is a 3000 pad and then polish. Come up pretty good I reckon. Nice and shiny and slippery looking. Time for shielding. So a lot of people think when you shield you're actually building a Faraday cage, but this is not the case. When you shield your guitar, what you're doing is you're creating like an antenna. And what happens there is all of those frequencies that hit your pickups, the antenna is there to try and catch them before they get into your pickup system and it's uh, the idea is to send those frequencies to ground um, it's not a Faraday cage just dating my work if anyone opens this up and goes wow that's great looking wiring then they can see that it's done by raising some guitar mods some nice new screws for the pick card kind of like making these look uh, road worn but then having nice new bits on them it's a bit like doing a rat rod you know you've got the patina of the old uh, body of the car and then brand new high performance gear underneath it managed to find some brass knobs that were pretty close to what come on these uh, we couldn't find originals these are actually off a tally but the dimensions the specs so close you would not know grounding the claw that's important so when you touch your strings you get the uh, ground happening it shuts up those single coil pickups and there's the nice polished up bullet truss rod nut I'm putting my Rising Sun guitar mods decal on the back of the headstock uh, just to show it's been modified by me. Um, if Frankie doesn't like that, it's only a water decal and I've put it above the lacquer. All he has to do is uh, sponge it wet and she'll come straight off. I usually put them under the lacquer, but this guitar's not mine, so show some respect. Look at that bridge. Got it come up good. I was pretty happy with that. Tuning set up, that's all done now. Now this uh, back plate, someone had hacked at it to, I don't know, widen the holes and they're all uneven. I recut them, fold it down and made it a square one. The square one's what came on the road stars later anyway.
All right, so I just got this back from Phil. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen it together. I'm going to crack it over for my 51st birthday. Happy birthday to me. So let's crack it. Nervous about this, man. I've been waiting so long. All right. Happy birthday to me. Here we go. Here we go. And here we go. Oh, wow. What has he done? <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, man, I'm so nervous. Wow. Oh my god, he went, I can't believe he found these knobs. He can, oh wow, wow, <laughs> wow. That's it. My childhood guitar, man, since I was a little kid. Oh man, this is ripper. This is absolute ripper. I love everything he's done with it. Wow. Oh, dude. He's even got the original tuning pegs. Look at it, it's it's a cracker. He's even polished up all of the bridge, all the knobs. Took me so long to even find these. Wow, I'm blown away. I am blown away. Phil, you are an absolute legend. You, are, you have no idea, man, what you've just done, man. That is absolute cracker. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much.